very much, uh, Mr. Chairman, and thank you, Mr. Secretary, for uh, staying the entire length of time so that all of us could answer our questions <clears throat> and your service to our country. Um, and listening to uh, the hearing today, um, I'm reminded that the uh, old adage that uh, we try in America to um, with um, to limit politics at the water's edge with all the finger pointing that's been taking place is maybe a thing of the past. But I'd like to, to focus on uh, the current situation with the B-2 process and, and B-1s. Uh, we've been trying to work with the State Department and we've frankly been frustrated um, on uh, what's the extent that the administration's exploring options for in-country or virtual processing or P-2 uh, and humanitarian uh, patrol applicants we're looking at all of that, um, Congressman, and I would very much appreciate um, working with you, working with your office, and if that's not happening, uh, we'll make sure that we fix it. But we're looking at everything to figure out how can we, uh, whether it's an SIV or whether it's a P1 or P2, uh, streamline, uh, expedite, consistent, of course, with our security. Like a lot of my colleagues, I uh, have a lot of constituents, and, and we have a, a hospital that a a NGO group here in, in, in California Valley is sponsored for women and children over the last 13 years. 75% uh, of the physicians and nurses are women. Mm -hmm. uh, excuse me, 40% of them are, are, are women and children. They're in great fear, they're minorities uh, uh, in the country and they have been trying to find a way out. Uh, are you considering fast tracking the B2 applicants and what's the process State Department is looking at scaling up on the high volume of these applicants uh, and what sort of infrastructure? I mean, it's not equipped to handle. Um, and will the departments, uh, with the state of the work, will you expedite any humanitarian patrol petitions, parole petitions, uh, and how long is that process for state to finish? Yeah, well, it's we're, we're, we're looking at, at all of that. I want to uh, come back to you and, uh, and come back uh, to Congress on some of the uh, ideas that we have uh, for doing that, as well as uh, looking at what resources would be needed uh, to do that, because I think we're going to need uh, more support. And this uh, goes across the SIV program uh, to uh, P1, P2. Who would be the key person that our office would work with uh, at, with you folks at state? I'm, I'm going to have the, the head of legislative affairs in the first instance, uh, her office follow up uh, with you in your office, and we can take it from there. It's been very frustrating. There are about, you know, almost 200 individuals with their families that are kind of in just great frustration and fear of their lives, frankly, yeah. uh, and notwithstanding all the good work that they've done. Um, and so, um, you know, I'm, I'm just reminded of the fact that uh, uh, it seems like with what the State Department maybe has not been able to do, and I know you've made a great effort, humanitarian effort in the evacuation, but uh, I'm working with other folks and it seems like a, an under, a modern underground railroad of, of some kind is, is taking place. Uh, with a lot of third parties trying to get mm -hmm. people by any means to uh, the Uzbekistan border or, or to Sikistan. I mean, how do you see that continuing and, and, and with great risk, I might add? Yeah, look, I think that there are people who are doing uh, extraordinary things to try to help uh, get people out of Afghanistan who, uh, who want to leave, uh, whether it is uh, NGOs, individuals, veterans groups, uh, and others, uh, wherever possible. Um, we want to uh, make sure that we're coordinated. Uh, we want to make sure that we're doing whatever we can to support these efforts. Uh, but we're also working, uh, Congressman, to make sure to the best of our ability that we have in, in place an overall process, an overall understanding that will allow people to leave openly and freely uh, with the necessary documents. That would be the best way to do this. Right, and if, but you're processing these P2 applicants and getting some understanding by the Taliban is obviously key to that happening. That's correct. And and so let me just close on this, on the bigger picture at 20,000 feet. You've been asked this question, and please get back to us with this, this, these brave people who are in great fear of their lives. Um, last night, I don't know if you saw it, but CNN did a great uh, presentation of two hours of 20 years of Afghanistan. Uh, was it worth it uh, under four different administrations? Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember uh, meeting with Maliki the third time in 2010, and I made the same comment that was made earlier. How do you expect to create democratic institutions where corruption in this part of the world is endemic, if not a way of life? And he gave me a BS answer. Uh, what's the lessons to learn here that you've 
you've gotten and you can't answer that in 10 seconds but well i think one of the, one of them is exactly the one you just cited congressman which is uh when you've got uh corruption corroding everything that you're trying to do it makes it a, a, a lot harder if not impossible that that's certainly something we need to follow up on look forward to working with you thank you thank you i, I now recognize